JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week August the 9th until August uh, August uh, the 13th. I am Harald Ambospisuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered a considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, this week appears to be relatively light uh, compared to the previous ones, uh, with the main events on the economic agenda being the US CPI for July, the UK GDP for the second quarter, and Australia's employment report for uh, July as well. The US CPIs are forecast to have slowed somewhat, but we don't expect them to alter expectations around the Fed's plans. The UK GDP is forecast to rebound and confirm the Bank of England's hoggy shift, while Australia's double market is expected to stay weak, adding credence uh, to the RBA's dovish stance. But we will um, get into more details in just a moment. Now let's take things from the beginning. Today, uh, the day appears to be a, a relatively light uh, one in terms of economic releases and events uh, scheduled on the financial agenda. That's, that said, it is worth mentioning that today gold opened with a huge uh, gap to the downside, breaking below the key support of uh, 1750 and hitting a low of around 1683. On Friday, the precious metal fell below the important 1790 zone, which had been acting as a floor since July 6th, in response to the better than expected US employment uh, data for, uh, for July. Today, the metal opened uh, much lower, perhaps as the break of the 1750 barrier uh, could have triggered uh, massive stop loss uh, orders. In any case, the metal recovered a decent portion of its uh, opening losses during the Asian trading today. Speaking about the US jobs data, the better than expected report may have increased speculation of an earlier tapering by the Fed and perhaps somewhat earlier interest rate uh, and perhaps some of the earlier interest rate hikes. Indeed, according to the yields of the Fed fund futures, uh, market participants have now brought slightly forth the timing of when they expect the Fed to start raising interest rates from April 2023 to March uh, 2023. Now, combined with uh, last week's uh, hoggish remarks by Fed Vice Chair uh, Clarida and several other policymakers, which came in contrast to Chief uh, Powell's uh, relative, uh, relatively dovish tone, a strong employment report may keep the US dollar supported for a while more. However, much may depend on the US CPIs for July due to be released on Wednesday. Now on Tuesday during the Asian session, Australia's NAMB Business Confidence Index for July is coming out, but no forecast is available. In any case, with the RBA extending its uh, bond purchases beyond September, although at a slower pace, and more importantly, noting that interest rates are likely to stay at present levels at least uh, until 2024, we doubt that even a positive surprise would alter market expectations around this bank. We stick to our guns that uh, among the commodity-linked currencies, the Aussie is the one that's likely to perform the purest. The purest. We see Aussie Kiwi as the best pair to continue exploiting uh, Aussie weakness, and this is due to a hoggish RBNZ, which is expected to push uh, the hike button as early as uh, this month. Later in the day, the German ZW survey for August is due to be released. The current conditions index is expected to have risen to 30 from 29 to, from 21.9, excuse me, while the economic sentiment one is forecast to have slid to 57 from 63.3. 
Although the current conditions index is suggesting that the economic recovery in Eurozone's growth engine continues uh, despite fears uh, over the Delta variant of the coronavirus, the economic sentiment reveals cautiousness uh, for the future. Therefore, we don't expect the Euro to receive any support if this is the case. With the ECB signaling uh, through its new guidance that it is now willing to keep interest rates low for much longer than the previous guidance suggested, and with expectations around an earlier Fed action on growing recently, we believe that the path of least resistance for the euro dollar remains to the downside. Now on Wednesday, during the European session, we get Germany's final CPIs for July, but uh, as it is always the case, uh, they are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. Later in the day, the US CPIs for July are uh, scheduled to be released. Both the headline core rates are forecast to have slid to 5.3 and 4.3% year over year from 5.4 and 4.5% respectively. Nonetheless, we don't believe that such a small decline will be enough to alter expectations with regards to the Fed's uh, future cor course of action and thereby halt uh, the dollar's uh, rally. Inflation would still be well above the Fed's objective of 2%, and with underlying uh, pressures still elevated, many market participants could stay convinced that this is unlikely to prove to be transitory, and that some action, that some action by the Fed may be needed uh, soon. Now on Thursday, the main event is likely to be the UK's preliminary GDP for the second quarter, with the forecast pointing to a rebound of 4.8% uh, quarter over quarter from minus 1.6%, something that could take the year over year rate up to 22.1% from, uh, from minus 6.1%. Industrial production for June is also coming out and the expectations are for a slowdown to 0.3% month over month from 0.8%. At last week's uh, gathering, the Bank of England lowered uh, the threshold of uh, when they will start reducing their stock of bonds. Specifically, they said that they will do so when the policy rate hits 0.5%. And they will do it by not reinvesting the proceeds of uh, maturing debt. The previous guidance was for the bank to not start unwinding its bond purchases until interest rates uh, were near 1.5%. Now, for some market participants, this could mean that quantitative easing tapering may start earlier than previously anticipated, and a strong GDP print could add credence uh, to that view. The British pound is likely to receive some support, but we prefer to avoid exploiting any gains against currencies, the central banks of which are also expected to start normalizing their policies soon. For example, we would see decent chances for an uptrend continuation in GBPOs. As for the rest of Thursday's data, during the Asian trading, Australia's wage price index for the second quarter is anticipated to have ticked down to 1.4 uh, from 1.5% year over year. While later in the day, we get the U.S. Uh, PPIs for July. The headline uh, rate is expected to have ticked up to 7.4% from 7.3% year over year, while the core one is forecast to have held steady at 5.6% year over year. Finally, on Friday, uh, during the Asian session, we have Australia's employment report for July. The unemployment rate is expected to have ticked up to 5% from 4.9%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has added 30,000 jobs, slightly more than June's 29.1 thousand. Although higher than June, this would still be a weak uh, number, which combined with uh, an uptick in the unemployment rates and the slowdown in uh, wages on Thursday is likely to keep uh, the Aussie under selling interest. Later in the day, the only decade or wor worth mentioning is the preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for August, which is, ex which is, ex is expected to have held steady at 81.2. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 8 o'clock a.m. GMT time. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.